Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you join us. I'm going to do something a little different uh, today than we normally do. I'm not going to cook anything. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about cast iron. Uh, folks in the group, a lot of folks in our groups use cast iron. I mean, why not? It's, in my opinion, the best cookware you can use. Um, and questions often come up about how to take care of it. And it seems to me that over the years, as the interest in cast iron has renewed, a, a whole sort of folklore has grown up around what you can and can't do with cast iron. And I, I have some really old skillets, and. I've, I've used them for a long time, and Fred and I use them for anything we want to use them for. And about the only thing I don't use this kind of cast iron for is uh, boiling water or making something that's light needs to keep a light color. Uh, for those I use, I do have a stainless steel stock pot, and I have a couple of enameled cast iron pans, and, and a couple of small things to heat water. Uh, but other than that, we use cast iron, regular old cast iron for everything. Um, and it it um, it bothers me a little that folks are afraid of it. And I think sometimes folks don't get into using cast iron because they think there's some mystery about it. So I just want to demystify it a little bit. So I'm going to show you a little bit of my cast iron, and then I'm going to show you how I clean it. And what I, I'm going to call this video is Common Sense Care of Cast Iron uh, because really there's not that much to taking care of it. Uh, there's a little bit that you need to know about it, but nothing that is mysterious. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to show you right now four cast iron pans, four different brands, tell you just a little bit about them. And what you see here is normally if somebody shows you their cast iron pan uh, you see a picture or whatever on Facebook it is freshly oiled so it will shine like a new penny uh, and these pans I've just taken them down off my rack I have a hanging rack uh, and this is how they are they're not freshly oiled uh, I, I oil them oh about every third time I use them uh, but these were washed and if it was time they were oiled and then they were put away. I have a lot of skillets and so I try to rotate them because the best thing you can do for your cast iron um, is to use it and to use it uh, often and well. Uh, but the thing that I would like for folks to understand is this is not fragile. This does not take a lot of special care. As a matter of fact, it's the reason I use them because I am a rough sloppy cook and I cook a lot and I'm just not going to be careful. And I've gone through several sets of very expensive cookware over the years uh, and because I am a rough cook and because I'm just not going to be careful, they didn't last very long. And you know, it's a great thing to understand yourself and so I understand that cast iron is what I need to be cooking with. Uh, so, uh, I'm also not careful with my cast iron. And I, mean, I think I'm reasonable and I think I use common sense. But if I, ha if I want something that I have to be careful with all the time, I'll go pay $1,000. Well, I really can't, but go pay $1,000 for, for a very fancy cook set. And then have to be very careful. So what I have here is what we've accumulated. And I'll show you this one first. And if you can see, this is a very smooth pan. Uh, I use it regularly. We use it for uh, gravy. We use it for uh, cornbread. We use it for frying chicken. We use it for anything we want to, uh, including tomato sauce, by the way, because it's a myth that acid will eat through the finish. This is a polymerized finish. It's not a thin coat, 
of something that will come off. It is adhered uh, to the surface. It becomes a part of the surface and it's not fragile. Uh, this particular pan has been in Fred's family as far as we can tell for over 115 years and been in continuous use. I doubt you can see that. The, the brand on it is Crone Cast and some nice lady on Facebook helped me find that Crone Cast was a Danish company that went out of business in 1901. So this pan was made no later than 1901 and it's been in the family forever. Um, Fred's grandmother, Velma, had this pan, as far as we know, her whole married life, and that the pan preceded that. So, uh, that's a really old one. This is a Wagner. I've not had it so long, but it's old, um, and it's as smooth as glass. And it gets used for just any old thing I want to use it for. And yes, you can stack them. This particular skillet is a BSNR. I got it when Fred and I got married in 1966. My mother-in-law gave it to me. Look at that. Now this has not been recently oiled. This is the pan as we as I store it. And it's had 49 years of use. And this, of course, is a Griswold. And that is just as smooth as glass. Now, I show you these pans, not bragging, even though I am bragging a little bit. I love these pans. Uh, but because when people start telling you, oh, you can't put them in water, um, if you put them in water, it will ruin the finish. Oh, you can't use metal utensils. If you use metal utensils, uh, it will ruin the finish. Oh, you can't cook anything acid. If you do, it will ruin the finish. Well, you know, you can ruin the finish if you try, but you have to try really hard. And all of those things that people tell you you cannot do with your cast iron are part of the folklore and the building mystery around cast iron, which is really just a really sturdy, utilitarian, wonderful piece of equipment for you to use in your kitchen. So I'm going to show you how I wash a pan. That may be a simple thing, but I'll let you see it. Hold so on. here is a dirty pan. This is my BSNR breakfast skillet. Uh, Fred cooked breakfast in it this morning, and I had to just leave it there because I wanted to make a video and show you how I clean it. So he cooked, what'd you cook in this Fred? Beverly sausage and eggs? Yeah. You may not even know what Beverly sausage is. Um, it's a kind of a bulk sausage. And it's been sitting on the stove now for a couple hours. And this is another one of those skillets I got when I first got married. It's had a lot of use. And I wipe the grease out of it because this is not bacon grease. If this were bacon grease, I would have poured it up and saved it. This is not something I want to save. And I wipe the grease out of it. Actually, not for the skillet, but because I don't want the grease in my sink to go down my drain. So, I wipe the grease out of it. pan of hot soapy water and this is just regular it's not Dawn it's Ajax it doesn't matter this is just regular um, hot soapy water and no hot soapy water is not going to damage your finish uh, if you left it sit overnight in hot soapy water it wouldn't be good for it uh, you might get a couple spots of rust if you got a couple spots of rust they would be pretty easily taken care of, but you, you don't want to do that. So, I leave it on the stove until I'm ready to wash it. Uh, and if that means that I have a dirty stove on my pan, uh, a dirty pan on my stove for a couple hours, I just do. And I'll wipe it out and wash it. 
when I'm ready. Okay, now this, it's a good skillet. It's been seasoned well. It's old. Um, and it comes clean with soap and water, but what if it didn't? What if there were something on here that were stuck? Uh, and folks are going to tell you you have to get one of those chain metal things or you have to get salt. Um, you, you really don't. Uh, I have two things that I use. One is a little razor scrape. And if I had a spot that wouldn't come off, let's say this were a skillet and I had made gravy and the gravy had stuck to the side, I would simply carefully but using a razor scrape I would scrape it right off. Now if you don't need a razor scrape what I have found almost all the time that works great is this is a cast iron brush and it's really just a natural bristle brush And it, it's fairly stiff. And let me say this too. Cast iron tends to build up crusty residue when you go and buy an old one. Usually you have to clean off the crusty residue. And if it's caked in crusty residue, it's because the person before you didn't wash it in soap and water. Uh, and avoided immersing it and therefore the residue built up. Wash the front and the back. And rinse it. Now, just to show, prove my point, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. And on the back this says, you can still read it, after almost 50 years, breakfast griddle. And you can still feel it and tell what it says. Uh, after almost 50 years. Hold on, I'll show you the rest of the process. Okay, on the stove, turn the heat on. And I wipe it out with either a dry cloth or a dry paper towel. When it starts getting hot, I have here some lard on a paper towel. You can use oil. You can use flaxseed oil. You could use grapeseed oil. I wouldn't use canola oil ever on anything. Now that's fairly thin. But I'm going to let it get good and hot. Now remember, I don't do this every time. I always heat it on the stove to dry it, but I don't oil it every time. I really only oil it maybe every third time. Because you don't have to... The protective coating on this is not oil. It's polymerized oil. It's adhered. Um, what you're doing is very slowly uh, replenishing that, but you don't have to do it every time. So I'm going to heat this up until I see it just barely start to smoke. So while we're waiting on that, let's talk a little bit about utensils. Uh, somebody's going to say, oh, you can't use metal utensils. Actually, uh, 
Some folks believe that metal utensils are better for it. It keeps uh, food from getting stuck and crusting up. So I, I use metal utensils. I use a metal whisk. I use metal spatulas. Uh, I, I don't do that in my enamel coated cast iron, but my regular skillets I do. And okay, we're starting to get starting. You can see the oil starting to pool there. One last thing about cast iron. Um, you know, it's never going to be 100% non-stick. Uh, non-stick would be, you know, Teflon. Who wants to use Teflon? I don't, I don't want to use Teflon. Uh, but it's pretty darn non-stick if you use it properly. The thing about using cast iron properly is you need to always preheat it because contrary to popular opinion, it really doesn't heat evenly. If you look, you can see that oil's pooling in that one spot. That's the hot spot. All around here is not good and hot yet. Uh, but it holds the heat uh, better than almost anything else. And so, once you let it preheat, it's good and hot all over. You see the smoke? We're getting the smoke. Now I'm going to wipe off any excess. Because if you leave it on too thick, it'll get gummy. And that's all there is to it. And it's ready to put away as soon as it's cool. So let me just summarize. What you're looking at is a pan that has been in continuous use for 49 years. It has been washed in hot water. Uh, I did refinish it once years ago because I had left it in the basement for a couple years and it had gotten a little rusty. So I cleaned it and refinished it. Uh, it, I use metal utensils. I cook acid uh, ingredients. It's almost nonstick. It's made probably a million and a half biscuits. Uh, and no telling how much cornbread, I'm sorry, not cornbread in this, no, no telling how much bacon. So the key, in my humble opinion, to common sense usage of cast iron is keep it clean, keep it oiled, use it, and use it as hard as you need to use it because it's iron. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch.